There's a time in every project when you get to a point you realize, hey, there shouldn't be parts left over or I'm missing a part. Uh, I guess I'm at that point. This used to be, uh, this was an area right here where I basically, when I depinned all those wires from the PCM connector and the and the two little connectors that was right here, C100, 152, 153, as well as a fuse block, all those wires got rerouted and I put them right here. These were wires that I expected to all disappear when the, when the uh, connectors that I was taking out uh, were, were taken out. And when I got done with all that, I had these three wires left over and I've got to, I've got to deal with these and I've done, done research. I forgot about the purple wire. The purple wire was originally, this was the wire that was originally used in one of the O2 sensors that I repurposed for the fan control relay. This is the one, it's, I've got it back in the other, it, still in the harness back there, and it specifically is this one where I've got to add a wire to, to pin 42 of the blue connector, and it's for my fan, my uh, cooling fan relay control. So this is not a problem, this is just going to go, I'm going to reroute this through the harness back over to the blue connector, and I'm going to punch it into uh, connector pin number 42. This black I was not expecting, but it's not that uncommon. Um, I tested this, I went ahead and trimmed off the end and uh, and test tested it on a t any one of these ground connections. So I get, if I actually test it against this ground, this is just a standard ground wire and it grounded something probably in one of those C100, C152 blocks and all that. So this is just an extra ground wire that's now not being used. I'm gonna go up to the junction place and I'm gonna cut it off, no, no big deal. This gray wire is a different story. This gray wire, I can tell because it's got one of these metal pins on it. This came from the PCM. So why did I take this off the PCM when its connector didn't disappear? If I follow this over, it actually goes to my temperature sensor. So why would I pull that out? And what I found, I believe I found, is that th there is a junction where this gray wire not only feeds the, the temperature sensor with a low signal it also there's a split a splitter and it goes also down the, the uh, transmission harness portion and provides something that's similar to the transmission and so it must have been labeled on one of these sheets as transmission and that's why I depend it the, so the key is this has got to go back in the pin connect uh, the PCM connector I just don't know which one I got to call out to Brandon at uh, lt1swap.com and I'm gonna I've, I've explained the situation I'm sure he'll get back to me uh, I've contacted a couple times. Uh, super nice guy. So once I figure out where this one goes back in, I'm gonna I'll clip off the wire where it used to come down to the transmission, and then I'll just run this back over, and we'll get my temperature sensor back connected, and uh, we'll be good. So I'm gonna reroute this forward. So just wanted to show you, not, you know, not all project go exactly as planned, but you know that's the little easy troubleshooting that you got to do sometimes to make it happen. So if you would have been following my exact directions up until this point you probably end up with a similar situation and that's how i dealt with these three wires okay so the usage for those three wires that i just described is going to change i wanted to leave that footage in because it was important you understand that you know you get when the process is over you're gonna have some wires left over figure out what they are and do something with them uh the black wire that ground wire it's hooked into uh the the chat this uh wiring harness ground and i need some ground wires in this place so i've basically extended i've tapped into that and extended two ground wires over to this location we'll we're going to deal with that in just a little bit so that's gonna be my ground so i didn't cut that off i actually extended it the gray wire the gray wire is my coolant temperature uh, sensor wire and it belongs in pin 41 of the blue connector i had taken that out and what was confusing was i'd taken other some other gray wires out so I didn't, and it didn't make sense where it belonged in the blue connector piece only because after brandon got back to me from lt1swap.com he said oh it belongs on pin 41 well pin 41 on my chart says it's supposed to be a black wire that kind of threw me but uh so i've got the gray wire back into uh pin 41 that's right where it was so that's solved so the purple wire i've got i do have it routed in here and it's plugged into uh pin blue 42 I've got that plugged in and it's still running through the wire. I'm going to change that as well. I don't want to exit the harness over on the other end. So um, I'm going to clip that purple wire off somewhere up in here and run it. I need, to, I need it to include it in, in these wires that are exiting the, the harness at this point. So I'm going to, all three of those wires, um, I'm going to change the direction of those and we'll get more details of that in just a minute. I think what I'm going to work on next, I'm going to show you a diagram of how this whole thing's going to kind of look. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start soldering on these uh, pink wires. All right, so here's my wiring diagram. This is like revision seven, but I'm pretty sure I got everything I want and the way I'm going to wire it. It looks a little bit confusing, but I'm going to walk you through every piece of this. In fact, let's first of all take a, like a 30,000 foot view of this 
and uh, let me show you that down across the bottom this is the main wiring harness this goes over toward the engine this goes to the PCM the computer um, you know it's the computer is going to run the engine through this basic main harness but there's wires that need to exit the harness to make this engine work um, I'm going to talk real briefly about this right now and then we're going to come back to it later these are just gauge wires and stuff like this extra wires you don't have to have these but I want to I'm going to have these we'll go through the detail of these later in fact I want you to kind of forget that this is even on the diagram at this point I want to focus in on the fuses and the relay and if you remember in in the first video of this series I mentioned we're going to create an LS style harness with a four wire system and so this illustrates at the top those four wires we'll have one that goes out to the fuel pump we got to provide the fuel pump 12 volts to get it to turn on to feed the engine fuel we've got a pink wire coming from the ignition switch that's this pink wire we've got a red wire coming directly from the battery and we've got a purple wire that's going to come from the battery and go to our starter and that'll be the X where the current going to the starter uh, is going to pass through. So there's the four wire system that we're, we're creating. But again, we're, we're going to do some additional wires as well outside of the harness. The very first thing that anyone that's doing this needs to understand is the fact that anytime you see an orange wire, and in this diagram, these red wires as well, that is what I call battery hot. Now, it doesn't matter if you got a key in the switch or the car sitting out in the garage or in the, in the, in the basement there's positive voltage going on all these red wires all the time and the and the orange wires that's that's always on let's say and anytime you see a pink wire these these will have a positive 12 volts on them only when the key is in the ignition and you got it pushed from but let's call you know when you put it in at position zero if you move it forward one notch that's uh, it, that's your ignition is on and now all the pink wires now have positive 12 volts as well so these pink are switched positive and the orange and the red is always hot okay so now let's zoom into this fuse block and these relays and let's talk in detail of how this works unless we're gonna start from the very top um, ultimately we have this red wire is gonna be hooked to the battery I've got 12 volts coming down through here it's gonna hook in to feed power to this first relay which is our main relay but it also is bridged and it comes straight down here to fuse number one. The fuses actually run up and down on the back side. This is, I'm showing, showing you the back side of our fuse block. But that fuse, if the fuse is good, it's going to actually take that power straight across and it's going to actually, this is also always hot going to this side uh, of this fuse uh, relay, as well as always hot coming down. And um, I've junctioned, this goes to the PCM on, on blue 20 and blue 57 as well as I need to feed the uh, the ODB2 connector has a always hot port on it so you need to make sure that uh, we, we have that there so again all the orange is always hot so I think that kind of makes sense there if you if I could get rid of all the other wires that would that would stand out that that's pretty simple uh, one thing you also want to point out is that fuse number one is is a standalone fuse because it's that always hot whereas you see fuse two three and four see the that yellow line across there that's actually a, a wire that goes and connects these fuses together so on this side of the fuse these three are all when they when they get hot all three are hot across this side and then the fuse going up and down will basically present that hot then to the bottom side and power these these items but let's talk about our main relay it's got hot coming across here and if the relay is turned on then that power that positive will go across here and it'll power this pink wire and the way that this turns on is there's a inside of a relay and if, if you don't understand how a relay works I'd suggest go look up some YouTube videos on that and I would love to actually put together something like that about four or five years ago I didn't understand relays and finally figured out how they work so um, anyway so this always hot right on this side if this relay is is switched on and I'll talk about that in a second then the this power goes across comes down and now feeds basically fuses three and two three and four um, the way that comes on is it's always grounded on this side this this part of the switch it's grounded here through this black wire it's a ground coming from the engine and if you turn put the key in the ignition and turn it on you'll get 12 volts coming down this pink wire as soon as you have a 12 volts on this pink wire and a good ground on this wire this this circuit closes and now this electricity can come through here and feed the rest of this stuff so that's how the main relay works by turning on the ignition switch you're now po providing power to fuses two three and four 
just to continue on how we've got our went ahead and put our fuel pump relay right here in this this area as well um, I've got a, this is a constant power coming to this side of the relay and if the if the circuit is closed it'll send that power out to the fuel pump and, and provide uh, electricity for that fuel pump that turns the fuel pump on so how does it get switched on well we've got a constant ground here on the bottom side of the relay and then if this green wire gets a positive signal on it it completes this circuit circuit which completes the power circuit and that power circuit then sends uh, that 12 volts to your fuel pump so how does that happen well this green wire is coming from the from the PCM when the when the computer tells the system we need to we need to turn on the fuel pump it sends a positive voltage down this green wire basically tripping this this relay completing the circuit and sending the signal that's how this relay works so we'll wire that up that way these pink wires are going to be brand new wires to the harness I'm going to show you how we're going to join a bunch of the original pink wires together to, to form these four pink wires we're actually going to do that next and what these pink wires are going to provide power to if you're if you got the key in the ignition and turn to position one is you know, this first wire here on on fuse number two that's going to put power to my coils and my PCM that'll turn the PCM on and then we've got uh, these two wires are go to go to the uh, eight different injectors and then this fourth pink wire is your O2 sensors MAF check engine and those type of things so let's look in more detail of how we're going to create these four pink wires from some of the existing pink wires that are in the harness okay so here's a look at page two of my little wiring diagram and um, I've got both the orange plan and as well as the plan for the four pink wires and uh, but I want to focus just on these pink wires for right now because we're gonna we're gonna look at them real quickly and then we're actually gonna go do it um, you know here's fuse two three and four these were the pink fuses two three and four and then here's those wires I'm gonna use 16 gauge wire I'm gonna be grouping basically groups of four and those are typically 18 or 20 gauge uh, that are in the chassis so this for fuse two that first wire there I'm gonna to group together my coil one uh, one three five and seven wire coil two four six and eight and then the two PCM wires that go back to the PCM um, so those four wires are gonna be merged we're gonna uh, basically put a solder joint right here and um, you know, these coil wires will go down the harness toward the engine and these PCM wires will actually go down the other direction the harness going back toward the PCM and then this wire is going to go up to my fuse block and then just real quickly again I here's uh, here's wire 3 going to fuse 3 it's got uh, inject uh, forged injectors this fourth third wire is going to have these three injectors and then the fourth wire will have the two O2 sensors the MAF and the check engine light so let's let's take a look um, now at actually merging some of these wires and, and I'll show you where they exist in the harness since I'm going to have four separate splices for these pink wires, I'm going to spray some out. I'm going to put one of them here, a second one here, a third one here, and probably a fourth one here before they go up to uh, where the, the fuse is. Okay, we got those done. Here's that first union for fuse two, 
fuse three, a second one for fuse three here, and here's for fuse four. So all my pink wires are now done. I've got them run up to where the fuse block's gonna be. Now we're gonna work on the orange wires. So for my orange battery wire, I'm gonna come off the fuse block with a 16 gauge wire, and actually gonna to go toward the direction of the PCM. I'm gonna pick up those two wires coming off the PCM and uh, solder those here, as well as have one of those extend all the way up uh, for the ODB2 connector. And again, in the plan view, here's, here's that 16 gauge wire with those three connections, two from the PCM and one for ODB2. So this is the positive wire for the starter and uh, it just is where it got clipped off earlier so it's just not long enough so I'm going to extend it with this red wire. Okay, so after finishing up that soldering, I was able to uh, just tighten this up with some uh, harness tape and uh, get it clearly defined. It's starting to look now like my diagram. Um, I've got the main harness with two different areas where wires will be exiting the harness. Uh, this one's all about power, and this one's all about gauges and indicators. So um, I've got it all laid out. So what I should be able to get done next time is the entire fuse block. Uh, with the two relays and I'm going to get this little data connector and I'll explain more about that as we get that connected. We'll see more about that next time. Jack it up.